Hi, I'm Nikki from Find Me Crafting. It's November, and that means I'm ready to release the patterns for the December marshmallow mug hats. They are the last patterns of the year. All of the other patterns, the full year's worth, are already available for free on my website, and there are video tutorials on YouTube for all of them. Most months have two patterns, and this month is no different. Let me show you what I've got. I've got poinsettias. I've got the classic red and white here. You could also use blush to color in the center if you wanted the pink ones. Look how absolutely adorable they look. And I've also got Christmas trees. You can bling these things out any way you want. You can add beads or pom-poms, anything that sparkles, whatever floats your boat. But if you want next level, let me show you. This one lights up. It is my favorite of the whole year. Look at how absolutely adorable. And you could make a full set for someone, give it away with a marshmallow mug at Christmas. What a great gift. You could give someone this cuteness for the whole year. Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new patterns or projects. I wanna get started showing you how to make the poinsettia or poinsettia, however you want to pronounce that. My mom and I have an ongoing debate about what is the correct way to pronounce that word. According to the dictionary, they are both right. I think I'm more right, but you know, we don't need to go into it any more than that to say that I'm right. Anyway, so the poinsettia marshmallow mug hat looks like this on the sides. And I made this one using Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in red. The one I'm going to be showing you today is going to be made with, I love this yarn in ivory, this little wonky ball that I have here. And the bottom is made with, I love this yarn in forest. I am going to be using a G four millimeter hook. So I have this part already done because this one is pretty standard to make. You start with a magic circle in the middle and then you're going to do some increases to make the circle wider. If you don't know how to do that, I will put a link up in the corner for a video that shows you how to increase, how to add stitches into each row. And then you can see I have all these weird little ones here. These are the front loops because for these rows, two, three, four, and five, you work in the back loop only. That leaves this front loop unworked and we're going to use that for this next part but if you're unsure of how to do that i'm going to put a link up in the corner for how to work in the back loops only so whether you're working with ivory or red or if you've decided to go with a pink whatever color you're going to make this part in we start by attaching the yarn so i'm going to make a slip knot and i'm going to attach my yarn in one of these front loops from row two I like to work, you can see my seam here in the back. So I attach everything right about here, just so I have all of the attached, slightly weirder parts in one spot. But you could attach it in any other one of those loops as well. I'm just gonna use a slip stitch to attach that. Just like that. Now in that same front loop, the one that I now have my slip stitch in, I'm gonna work all the rest of these stitches. This is going to make one petal. So I'm going to start with two half double crochets. I'm going to yarn over, go underneath the loop, pull up a loop. I have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through. Now in that same stitch, I'm going to make another one of those. So yarn over, under the loop, pick up a loop. There are three on. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. And I'm going to chain two. So one, two. And now in the second chain from the hook, the first, here's where my hook would be. This is the first chain from the hook. This is the second chain from the hook. I'm going to slip stitch into that. And now it doesn't look at all like a petal, but just keep going, it'll get there. Now I'm gonna do two more half double crochets. So underneath, I have three loops on, yarn over, pull through, and one more like that. Yarn over, under the loop, pull up a loop, three loops on, yarn over, pull through. And now to finish that, I'm going to slip stitch in that same, under that same loop. And that kind of finishes it off. And there is one petal. Now in the next front loop from this row, I'm gonna do a single crochet, just like that. 
and then I'm going to move to the next front loop right here and repeat the process for the petals. So I'm going to yarn over, go underneath that front loop, pull up a loop, three on, yarn over, pull through, and now I'm going to do another half double crochet, just like that. I'm going to chain two in that second stitch from the hook, the second chain, I'm going to slip stitch, two more half double crochets, and then I'm going to slip stitch right there to complete my second petal. I'm gonna do another single crochet and then a petal, and another single crochet and a petal. So once I've made four petals in that row, I have one more front loop right next to it. I'm going to do another single crochet, just like I've been doing. And now I'm gonna single, or not, now I'm going to slip stitch right here, kind of at the base of my first petal. And that row is complete. I need to move to my next row of front loops. So this is the row of front loops from row three. And I'm going to pick one of these stitches here between my two petals and I'm going to slip stitch into that just to kind of move rows and now I want to begin the petal process again but I want these petals to be a little bit longer so I'm going to be working a double crochet into that same loop I just slip stitched to so I'm going to yarn over go into that same loop pull up a loop there are three loops on yarn over and go under two yarn over and go under two more. Now I'm going to do another double crochet. So yarn over, same loop, pick up a loop. There are three on, yarn over and go under two, yarn over and go under two more. I'm going to do two chains. I'm going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. And then I'm going to work two more double crochet. So it's just like the last row, only instead of half doubles, we're doing doubles just to make them a little bit longer, a little bit easier to see behind the first row. And now I'm going to slip stitch in the same stitch, all of it in the same stitch right there. And now I have my first petal from the second row, which I'm calling row 13, just so that you have all of these that gets you to 11. And then I wanted to start up here and keep counting from there. So this is technically row 13. Now in the last row, we did one single crochet in the next stitch. This time we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. So I'm gonna go underneath, pull up a loop, there's two on. Yarn over and pull through, that's one. Here's a single crochet in the next one and a single crochet in the third. Now I'm gonna begin the process in the next stitch to make this petal. So two double crochets, chain two, slip stitch, two double crochets, slip stitch, and then you're gonna keep going around. There's those three single crochets again. You're gonna have four petals in this row as well when you get back to the start. So I have my four petals. These are the four from the first row. You can see I have one, two, three, four here in this second row of petals. And I am doing three double crochets after that last petal to finish right next to the first petal. I'm going to single crochet kind of right here at the base of the first petal. And now it's time to move to my third row here of front loops. So once again, in between two petals, I kind of want to shoot for in between these two. So this one's from the first row to the second. I just want to kind of stack them. So I'm going to put a petal right here. I'm going to single crochet to this row here. For the last row of petals, I'm going to work them just like I did the second row of petals. So they're going to be made with double crochets. I'm um, so in the same loop that I just slip stitched to, I'm going to do two double crochets. Then there's a chain two. I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Not split my yarn because that's annoying. Now I'm going to do two more double crochets and then finish with a slip stitch in the same stitch. Now, going around, I am going to slip stitch, not single crochet, but slip stitch in six loops. So just go underneath, 
Follow the loop through there and through the loop on my hook. That was one. Here's two. From this same loop that I just put my sixth slip stitch, I'm going to begin again with another petal. So this is another double. And just continue around. You should have four petals in this row as well. Once you get back around, you're just going to slip stitch at the base of that first petal. And I'm going to cut this yarn and finish it off because I'm done making petals. So I cut it, pull it through. When I weave my ends in for the petals themselves, you can see they're kind of all squished up. And I have a technique to help you unsquish them at the end. But I do also go in and try to tack some of these petals down with my, my needle. So I just... Kind of went through the center of that one. I just want them to lay a little flatter. So I might as well make use of the end I have. I'm going to go up through like all three layers here and tack these together. This isn't necessary. It just helps it lay a little flatter. I'm going to attach my green yarn the same way I did with the petal yarn. So I'm going to make a slip knot and I'm going to find my seam. That's where I like to start. And I'm just going to slip stitch right here do a chain to secure it and now i'm going to work the leaves so the leaves are just like the petals but there's more of them so in this same stitch i just slip stitch two i'm going to do two half double crochets i'm going to chain two i'm going to slip stitch in the first chain from the hook I'm going to do two more half double crochets and I'm going to slip stitch in the same stitch I've been working in. That is one leaf. After you finish the first leaf, you're going to single crochet in the next loop, then slip stitch in the loop after that. And from this loop that you just slip stitched, you're going to work another leaf. So it's going to be leaf, single crochet, slip stitch, same stitch, leaf, single crochet, slip stitch, all the way around. You'll have a total of 15 leaves. After you have all 15 of your leaves made, you will have these last two loops here to do another single crochet, and a slip stitch into and then I'm just going to slip stitch near the bottom of my first leaf and the actual crochet portion is done you just have to cut this and finish it off so how did that feel making all 15 leaves it feels like you're almost done because you got the petals done and then 15 leaves <laughs> that takes a long time so this next part, because mine looks kind of squished like this, it, it just all kind of is a little too compact for me. I'm going to do a little bit of blocking. I like to put the marshmallow mug hat on the marshmallow. And then I'm just going to take, I'm going to put some paper towel behind it here. And I'm going to just take a regular water bottle with water in it, nothing special, just water. And I'm going to spray the heck out of this. I'm just going to get it wet and then I'm going to straighten out my leaves and my petals. Just get everything looking the way I want it to look. Any part that's still dry, I'm going to hit with the water again. Now I'm just going to let it dry so that it stays like this, so that it's not all squished. It's going to stay much prettier looking like this. All that's left to do for this white one is to glue beads here in the center. I just hot glued these in. And then because I wanted it to look a little less, maybe symmetrical is the word, I hot glued down every third leaf. I hot glued it to the base. So one, two, three, glued it down, one, two, three. And you end up with this gorgeous look. You could also take some blush, makeup blush, and put it in the center here if you wanted to make one of those pink and white ones. Whatever you want to do, you, I also considered putting a little bit of glitter glue here on the ends, like on the tips of the leaves. You can sparkle it up however you want. 
So to make the Christmas tree hat, this is the base that you're going to make before you begin the fun stuff up here. So this portion here is made with Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in Forest and the little bottom, the bottom tree bark area is made with Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in Coffee. This just starts with a magic circle here at the top and then as you go, you read the instructions, you are going to add stitches into some of the rows to make it wider and about every fourth row you're going to work in the back loop only which is going to leave these front loops right here for us to work in to make the rest of the tree the only other interesting part is down here in the base there is a one row with a decrease where we take out a couple stitches just to make it a little bit tighter here at the bottom I'm still working with a G four millimeter hook. And once you have all the base done and I've finished off and I've tucked in all of those ends, now we're going to add the bobbles, the little tree branches, if you will. We are going to work with the bottom of the hat, the opening part toward you. And I'm going to attach some forest yarn with a slip stitch to one of my front loops. So you can see my seam here. I'm gonna attach right near that. That, by the way, is gonna be completely hidden by what we're about to do. So I'm going to tighten this up. I'm gonna pull it through and just do a chain to secure it. And now what you're gonna do is work bobble stitches. Yarn over, working into that same stitch I just attached to. I'm gonna pull up a loop. Now I have three on. I'm gonna yarn over and go under just two loops so I have two loops still on, and I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna yarn over, go underneath, pull up a loop, whoop. There are now four loops on, I'm gonna yarn over and go under just two of them, so there are three loops on. And I'm gonna repeat that until I have six loops on my hook. So yarn over, underneath, pull up a loop, yarn over and go under two, now we're up to four, so I gotta do it two more times. Under two, yarn over underneath. I'm gonna go under just two. Now there are six loops on my hook. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna yarn over and go through all of them. I'm gonna chain one, that makes your bobble. I'm going to slip stitch into the stitch next to that. And look, there's just one little bobble on the front. So now I'm gonna be working into the next front loop right here the next stitch so I've slip stitched to this one and I'm gonna yarn over and go under the next one to begin my next bobble so there's three on yarn over go through two I'm gonna keep doing that until I have six loops on my hook there's three so there are six loops on yarn over pull through all six chain one slip stitch in the next stitch and then begin another bobble in the stitch after that and you're gonna go all the way around. This first row has 20 bobbles and 20 slip stitches in it. Once you have your 20 bobbles made, I'm just going to slip stitch over here near the base of my first bobble so they kind of connect. Now, from here, I do cut the yarn and finish off after that row. I'm gonna tie my ends together, I'm gonna to weave them in and then I'm going to reattach up here at this next row and repeat the same process. So it's bobble, slip stitch, bobble, slip stitch, bobble, slip stitch, all the way around. This row will have 16 bobbles. This row will have 12. This row will have eight. And this row will only have four bobbles in it. But I do cut off my yarn and start over because otherwise, when you try to slip stitch up to this next row, because there's four rows in between, it deforms the bobble nearest where you're doing it and that just does not look good so even though it means a whole lot more ends which i hate weaving in it's worth it for the finished product once you get all your bobbles done look how adorable it looks and i just wanted to show you how i add lights to this now you don't have to add lights i'm going to show you another method for decorating this but the lights are pretty dang cool so i got these from joanne fabrics 
and they are the perfect length for this. So I know you can buy some on Amazon. I haven't experimented with those because these had just the right amount of length. You can see this hot mess of, <laughs> of lights. So let me show you how I attach them. I first of all put some batteries in and plug them in because you need to be able to see where there are lights. There are large gaps in between and I wanted to make sure that I had them spaced evenly. So I recommend turning them on so you can see what you're doing. So my end is small enough, I can put it through a yarn needle, which is gonna be helpful because sticking this piece through here by itself is kind of tricky. It wants to bend, it doesn't wanna go through the yarn. So I'm gonna come up through, up right near the top bobbles up here and just pull through my one end. So now you can untangle it from your yarn needle and I'm gonna pull the whole thing through, the whole strand gently. I'm going to pull out to the top of the tree. Once I get all but this part here at the end that doesn't have any lights through. So there's a light inside there, and then this is just cord. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put the battery pack inside my marshmallow mug. I'm gonna kind of stuff this part down there, and I'm gonna put my hat on the mug. It's gonna hold my tree in place, and I can very clearly see what's going on. So now it's just a matter of winding it around the tree. And I'm doing it in the spaces here between the bobbles. And see, there's one light. And see, we wrap quite a bit around. And here's another light. So I go around until I feel like there's enough lights evenly spaced around the tree. So that row has lights pretty much all the way around it. And where's the back? I'm going to just bring this section here down to the next row and keep wrapping, but wrap multiple times so that I know that every section has a good amount of lights. It's a lot like dealing with a regular Christmas tree. You got to make sure your lights are spaced evenly. And when I get to the very bottom, I just have this little bit left and I'm going to just stick it inside the hat and kind of bend it around so that it is going to stay in place. Just kind of flattening it right there, just kind of flattening it. And then of course, if you have any areas where you can see the strand instead of just the light, you can kind of shove that in there because it's green, it matches the green pretty well. So you can camouflage it and just stick it into the tree. And then ta-da, you have your tiny little marshmallow hat mug tree. It's adorable. <laughs> Another way to decorate your tree is to put on some beads. So I have some beads here. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're like faceted little gems in here. And I'm going to use this. This is a Diamond Dots, not their specific brand. This is like a knockoff, one of these pens. And the great part about this is that you can you press down into this goo stuff and it puts some in the tip here and it makes it slightly sticky. So then I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab the front of one of these gems. It holds it really nicely. I'm just gonna apply the tiniest amount of hot glue and I'm just gonna stick it onto my tree. And I didn't burn myself and I got it on there, I got a little bit of glue and look how pretty. So I'm just gonna cover the whole tree in these tiny little gems. You can also do this with beads. You can also use pom-poms, and I'm not sure if pom-poms would stick with this, but you could probably use a tweezers to hold the pom-poms to use those to decorate. Whatever you think might add the just the right amount of bling to your tree. Look how cute these are for Christmas. I just love these. Happy crafting.